Welcome to episode 3 of the War on Build. This video is edited a bit differently from my usual style and that's because I had some remnants from episode 2 and I had some obviously some footage for this episode and then I had some footage for episode 4 even and then there was a whole mishmash and the original edit of this episode I was jumping from topic to topic to topic and then back to topic and it, it was really confusing and stupid so I decided to edit this a different way instead mostly focusing on the aluminium extrusions and the frame but that also means that this video is edited non-chronologically non which means you know, well, um, there might be some confusing jumps here and there so again if that causes some confusion I'm sorry but trust me it was much worse so yeah that's it so let's get on with the episode I decided to use this to cut the aluminium sheets all four sheets are now measured and cut and I've also marked the the edges that I also need to cut for this is the bottom plate for example and actually I couldn't find wide enough aluminium that's why there are four sheets right now in reality there's supposed to be two sheets I'm not gonna do the enclosure I'm just covering the electronics compartments that's why and if you want an idea of how big the printer is well this is the bottom plate these four corners are for the feet and motors and there goes a fan to cool the electronics and below this here we have the deck panel which is where the electronics mount to as well and it's in between the heat pad underneath the heat pad and electronics mount to well electronics mount to extrusions actually but yeah this electronics bottom side at least go against this deck panel so yeah I've also marked the part that I need to cut these are four Z belts as I said, this thing has four Z motors and it doesn't have lead screws for Z it axis. It actually has belts. So yeah, and these two are holes that need to be drilled. And those are for power supply mounting. At least one of the three power supplies. We'll get to the power supplies later. At the same time working in the, as this, I'm working on the paintings. And they are coming along nicely, the extrusions. Uh, I divided them into three parts, two of them are now done. I do three coats on each side with basically some cheap uh, matte black sp uh, spray paint. So yeah, as I'm talking right now you're probably seeing them in progress. Yeah, here they are all painted, all the extrusions and the panels and unfortunately a little bit scratched as well even though I tried my best. Well, it's not that important this is gonna be the bottom panel anyway and yeah this painting took like five days and six cans of spray paint but yeah it's done at least and yeah now i can properly breathe i can continue the bits we've been waiting for for tapping have arrived and this is actually a week later than the last recording in this video but yeah they have arrived and actually as you can see I've already done it so yeah you can see the threading in there so that means all the extrusions are now fully ready I do need to drill and have one hole in the heat pad but I'll do that uh, later so there is no reason to waste any more time so we can start actually assembling the frame in this video i assembled the frame well i don't know if i showed it or not but the place that i ordered the extrusions from they didn't cut them quite square they they're at an angle and i was expecting that to cause some problems but i didn't expect this much honestly so yeah this frame right now is basically useless but what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna use it and to fix the non squareness issues I'm basically gonna use some big L brackets on the corners of the cube 
I don't think because of the printed plastic parts I'm not gonna be able to use it on the bottom side but other than that I think I should be able to use it on the remaining five sides the four sides and the top obviously welcome to episode 4 in between the episodes the corner brackets have arrived and I've actually installed them and I assume they would pull the extrusions into place but it didn't so I completely disassembled the frame and reassembled it on my work table while it was a lot better it still wasn't quite square so we, so we are going to assemble this on a countertop this time I'm pretty sure this is granite I'm a hundred percent because I'd have to ask my landlord but I'm pretty sure it is and yeah for that, for the first time and probably the only time where in my kitchen I brought everything that I think I'll need here Here are the T-nuts and the screws and my drill and over here are the extrusions I've assembled the frame as square as I possibly can I've been at this for 3 hours going very slowly and very carefully but in the end I don't know if you can see it, but you can probably hear it, it's not square. Which means that, well, first of all, all the, um, uh, all the painting and all the money and obviously most importantly yeah, the time I spent on the extrusions are wasted. These extrusions are truly useless. I hope to rescue them with these brackets, but as you can see, it didn't work. This is the third time that I assembled this and yeah, it's not gonna work. So, uh, this means that I need to uh, order new extrusions. So that's where we are at with the extrusions. And yeah, as you can see, I do need to source different extrusions. For that, I have three options. I have the option of rolling the dice with another local source because, well, the quality of the extrusions weren't bad, as you could see before, it's just that they were cut badly. So I could try a different local source. This time I would actually find black extrusions if I can. If I can't, and I only have the silver option, I, I'm not gonna do it. The painting was much bigger of a paint than I expected, so I don't want to deal with that again. If I don't go with a local source, the other two options are going with a China source. China, I haven't asked for a quote, but from what I can tell, it will probably cost me like 100 to 150 dollars. Or I could go through with genuine Misumi extrusions, which would probably be the best option, but also the most expensive one. Misumi doesn't ship to uh, private customers where I live, so I'll have to go through with uh, some reseller for that. In Germany there is Fermio Labs, and there's also another reseller in US, but that doesn't matter. And yeah, I could go with that, but that really costs a ton of money, about $300 if I remember correctly. So. It is a fortune. In any case, I'm not gonna be ordered. I'm not going to be able to order them this month, December. So yeah, if you have any opinions, leave them in the comments. It might affect my decision. But other than that, yeah, I don't know. The biggest problem with spending the money is well, this month my money is stretched as thin as it, as thin as it is possible. Next month, well. I could create 100, 150 dollars probably, but, but I doubt that I could find enough money to go with the genuine ones next month. Or, well, I could then I would lay something else for the project. I haven't ordered the rails or the parts from Mouser yet, and the Raspberry Pi actually, because I'll go with the Raspberry Pi 4. 
so that would end up delaying the project significantly but again that would also be the safest option so yeah i'm kind of torn between a few decisions right now again if you have any input leave them down below but other than that i'll try to figure out the best solution and in the next episode i'll probably announce it and well maybe the parts have arrived by the next episode i don't know we'll see and for the remainder of this episode since i can't work on the printer itself i do have some unboxings i the parts from triangle lab have arrived and i'll show you show them to you and i think a box from big three tech is about to arrive as well if it does i'll include that as well but other than that there is nothing else i can do in this episode while waiting for the rest of the parts my order from triangle lab arrived as you can see we have a lot this is the uh, genuine gates belt it's not actually made in usa it's made in some asian factory but it's officially licensed by gates and it's the same one that e3d sells by the way uh, yeah you can see and um, we'll see how well this lasts but i've heard that this is genuine so hopefully it will be good enough we have two types for the Voron. That one was 6mm, this one is 9mm, and this is for X and Y axes. Here's the 24 volt cooling fan for the hot end. This is a filament runout sensor. This, I just bought it for you know just to make my order above a, a certain price so i can apply a coupon but yeah this is a nozzle cleaner apparently we'll see how well this works this is the 24 volt heater and i think yeah i guess the thermistor is in there as well but i'm going to use the pt100 this is the adapter board for a PT100 thermistor. As I said, I'm not going to be able to use the native support, the duet head with the daughter board. Well, not native, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to use the adapter board because SKR doesn't support it natively. Anyway, here is the new Triangle Lab heat sink, heat break. I guess this is the more of the important stuff. So this is the titanium heat break. I'll get a macro shot of this as well, but I'm probably not gonna be enough for you to judge the quality. Here is the nozzle. I'm pretty sure I ordered 0.4 millimeters. Yeah, it's 0.4 millimeters. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Plated copper uh, block. These are the extruder gears that we will have use in the mobius extruder based on the bone tech extruder so clones of that here i just run them bowden clips and a black sock i ordered instead of the blue one here because i'm not going with the blue build this again i ordered this just to fill up a certain price but this is for edge trimming on you know the elephant footing on printed stuff this is to get rid of that i normally use knives but yeah i'll try this as well and see how well it works and finally here i have uh, some black bowden tubing and the thing with the triangle lab is instead of being two millimeters inside in the inner diameter it is narrower i don't remember uh, I think it was 1.8 or something like that, closer to the filament's actual thickness, basically. Just like the Capricorn tubing that E3D uses. And again, it, the people say that it's about the same quality. And yeah, we will see. I have some of that E3D stuff as well. Not enough to do the entire machine, but maybe I will be able to do 
like a comparison, maybe, I don't know. And they uh, included a free bottom tube cutting tool. I never use these, it's not necessary, side cutters are just fine, but yeah, they included it. So yeah, that's my order from Triangle Lab. The order from Big 3 Tech hasn't arrived, it'll probably come tomorrow, but yeah, it's not gonna be in this video, I'll probably put it in the next one. And that's it for this video. As I said before, if you have any opinions on the extrusions, leave them down below. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a like down below. And thanks for watching.